What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Servo Drafts. This is episode number two. And uh, last time we drafted our favorite baseball teams from the 2010s, last decade. And then today we got some NBA, Nick, and um, I'm ready for this. You know, we got – this is like our wheelhouse, I think, watching – you know, when we started watching basketball more um, in this past uh, 10 years. So, I don't know. You ready, Nick? Yeah, I'm very ready. I – we started – I mean, I started watching like later in high school, so I feel like this is yeah perfect for me. Um, I don't know, dude. It it was a little trickier towards the end. Um, like, I mean, I think there's a lot of players that are deserving to like be in, in this top twenty, you know, list that we're gonna yeah. draft. We're gonna have, but I'd like to see where the chips fall. Yeah, right off the bat, you know, one guy that I've been trying to like debate back and forth is, uh, or a couple guys is some of the older guys that. You know, their later careers kind of stretched into, you know, the early part of this past decade, kind of like like Kobe Bryant. Uh, I had, like, Dirk on my list, you know, some of those guys. But later in their careers, it was just, you know, they definitely fell off a cliff, uh, uh, especially, you know, Kobe had those last couple of years of his career where he was just chucking shots every game. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I think it, we ran into the same thing with, like, Miguel Cabrera and Troy Tulowitzki last time. I mean – you might get five or six years of great production and then just like stop. So um, yeah. interested to see how this plays out. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Well, so last, uh, last draft, I had the option of either picking first or choosing to pick the second, third. Um, and you have that uh, option this time. So, uh, and w so what, what are you going to be doing? You got, you know, obviously I think there's an, a clear cut, like top tier, so it's it's big if you want to pick either first and lock down one guy that you really want or, you know, have two guys. So, I don't know. What are you going to do here? I'm going to – I'll take the first pick and take the unquestioned pick. It's the Mike <laughs> Trout of this generation. Um, everyone knows what it is. It's LeBron James. It's yep. really not even close. Um, you know, I think he, he's made the playoffs – in nine out of the 10 years. And the, the year he did not make it was last year when he was hurt for most of the year. Um, yeah, three three titles. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, a bunch of MVPs as well. Um, just consistently like ruining teams in the East, destroyed the Thibodeau Bulls, the Dwayne Casey Raptors, um, the, the Hawks. Like he just like, he got so many coaches and GMs fired because no one could beat him. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he'll go down as, you know, a top two to three guy ever. So he's an easy choice. Number one for me. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it's really interesting that we got a, a clear cut number one in both NBA and MLB so far. Um, you know, if we, when we keep doing this for other sports and stuff, it, it'll be interesting to see if there is that clear number one or, or if the strategy is to go number two and three, you know, get two good guys instead of having to make that decision for the number one. Uh, but yeah, I mean, LeBron, he's the clear number one choice here. <laughs> um, all right. My, my, oh, so by the way, real quick, uh, I don't know if we said this before, but the format we're doing here, we're doing, um, we're doing eight rounds in total and you have to pick five starters. Um, and the way we're doing that is kind of, you know, the way the NBA does it with their all-star teams um, you have to have, you know, we're eliminating the center position. So you have a few forwards and guards. And what we're doing is you have to have at least two guards and at least two forwards. And then the third spot can kind of just be either guard or forward, um, you know, whatever way you want to go with it. So kind of opens it up more. And then we're having three bench spots. So, and, and again, you can go whatever way you want with that. So, um, all right. With that being said, um, two and three for me, I'm going to go – it was a tough choice because, I mean, obviously there's so many ways you can go with this. And I am going to go – Kevin Durant is my uh, my second my, – my, my number two overall, my first pick here. Um, I mean, just like one of the best overall players, I think, in this past decade. You know, people knock him for what he did and, and went to the Warriors to get a ring and all that. But, I mean, the dude is just one of the best pure scorers. Um and for being, you know, almost pretty much seven foot and playing, you know, small forward, um, it's just like he's been kind of like one of those unicorns, the first ones that we've seen. Um, 
And I think, you know, it's been him, uh, you know, he's had a couple of those injuries and all that, but it's basically been him and LeBron being like the top tier um, for this past decade. So I got him and then I'm going to come back with my second one. I, I need someone to stop LeBron. So I got to go Kawhi Leonard here. <laughs> I mean, um, I think it's interesting to see how his career has turned out. Cause I, I remember uh, the draft when he got drafted, you know, out of San Diego state and he like, wasn't, you know, he didn't have a really good offensive game. He was just kind of a weird prospect. Um, but he's really turned into just literally one of the top, you know, definitely a top five player in the in the world. Um, finals MVP with the, the Raptors and the Spurs. Um, and, you know, eventually it might happen with a third team, I think. You know, this year could have been the Clippers, but – We'll see what happens there. But, yeah, I mean, Kawhi is now just like a complete game. And, and I'm – yeah, I'm starting out with KD and Kawhi. Yeah, I think uh, two really good picks. Um, KD, when you look at the numbers, 10 All-Stars in this these 10 years and nine All-NBA teams. LeBron was 10 and 10. So – and no one else is really that close. So those two guys have just consistently been the best scorer of the last 10 years. And to your point, yeah, Kawhi, I think, um, doesn't have the same offensive stats as some of those guys, but the last couple of years has clearly been a top three player in the league. So um, makes total sense um, to draft, I think, arguably the best single defensive wing defender in the league. Yeah. Um, well, you've left me – so you took the two forwards that I liked, but you've left me with the best guard of the decade, and that's Stephen Curry. Um, yeah, that's. Who that, I'm that's take I forward. mean, I was thinking about that for the for the two three turn there. Yeah, I mean, six All Stars, six All NBAs, twenty three point five points, um, three titles, changed basketball. Um, you know, love having him and LeBron on the same team. They're going to yeah. be unstoppable in the pick and roll. So. Um, be excited about that one. That's a pretty good one. I, I mean, it's definitely the best guard on the uh, on the board there. Um, you think you know people have been debating whether he's going to go down as one of the better players of all time. I mean, where do you think he's he'll he'll land at, at when he's done with his career? Because I mean, think about it. He's he's already passed Ray Allen for being like the most you know the best three point shooter. I think, and when his career's done, he'll probably have more. Uh, you know, points than a lot of the guys on the top, top list there. Um, you know, it's gonna be interesting where he lands there though. Yeah. I think he's already the best shooter of all time. Like I think yeah. that's already pretty much in the books. I think he's going to go down as a top five, like offensive player of all time. Um, I think that's definitely a possibility. He's just got to stay healthy. I think the next five years, I mean, it's just going to be a matter of staying healthy and like putting good stats up, which I think he will. Um, yeah. I think overall, I think he's probably somewhere in the top 20 for me, um, top 25 of all time. Just, again, purely an offensive player. I think defensively he's he's not like a minus, but he's just like average. Yeah. But um, definitely the most gifted shooter of all time, um, I think. Yeah. All right, well, my pick here, and I got to go guard here. Um, and I'm going Chris Paul. You know, he's going to be my point guard. And just one of, I think, in our generation, one of the best pure passers that there is. You know, we saw it uh, especially when he was with the Clippers and, you know, Lob City there with Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan. But um, also just been one of the one of the better on-ball defenders at guard, I think, too. I mean, he's – been all defense a bunch and he's you know he always leads or in top you know top tier of the league in uh steals per game and all that so um I'm going Chris Ball one of my favorite players to watch too just because he's he's just so fun to watch you know on the ball um yeah so I'm going him to to lead my offense yeah it's a great pick I mean point god his teams win wherever he goes, maybe not in the postseason, but. Um, yeah, I want to see yeah. him to win a finals. I was, I'm hoping, I think one day we're going to get a banana boat team. <laughs> we're going to get the LeBron, Chris Paul. We'll see if Carmelo's still in the league then. Um, and Dwayne Wade probably in the front office or something, but. <laughs> yeah. 
I think we're gonna I get. Think like, I think we're gonna get Chris Paul playing with LeBron at some point. Dude, you look at the Thunder. We're such an exciting team this year. Like they, you know, him and Shea and like Danilo Gallinari and like uh, fun to watch. Yeah, like Dennis Schroeder. Like they were really underrated good team kind of a surprise team but I just don't see him moving anywhere else he just is making too much money you, you cannot trade yeah. for him currently yeah. um I think if it's going to be a banana boat scenario it's going to be that like one year like we don't really care anymore we just want to play with our friends and like retire together and like that <laughs> stuff um which it but, might which might happen you know at that I mean, point at that point, LeBron's going to be old, too, that, you know, it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be Bronny uh, James just running the team. <laughs> yeah, I mean, LeBron is already the GM of, like, the team anyways. He's just going to be like, I want my friends in my last season to play yeah. with me. I'm LeBron. Like, make it happen. And, I mean, listen, as a business, like, people will pay as long as Corona is, like, eradicated by then. Like, people will pay. Those stadiums will be sold out every night. So, you know, could be worse, I suppose. Right. And, and yeah, if he's, even if he's like, you know, the 10th man off the, off the bench, then like, you know, he'll, but he'll still get a ring if he's, if he's there. So. <laughs> That's right. I mean, I'd like to see it happen too. Um, yeah. But we'll see. Um, so for my pick, I think this guy, I mean, I'm not going to be playing a lot of defense, but I'm going to be scoring the ball a lot. And that's James Harden. Um, yeah. You know, I think you – it's hard. This guy's, again, I think right there with Steph, just like maybe a notch below him in terms of like shooting. He's a better passer, good rebounder, but maybe just a, like a tick below him in shooting. But in terms of like an offensive basketball player, I mean, he is in the top two of this decade. Um, maybe yeah. him and KD of just like pure like offensive output. Um, so – He's got to be on my squad. We're begin- we're gonna be getting a lot of buckets, but playing no defense. So, yeah, Lebr- Lebron's gonna start, you know, yelling at him, to pass the ball and stuff. You know that's happening. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. You look at both of them; they're both really ball dominant. But I'd be like, I do like the stagger kind of thing, you know, just like one of them rests and then one of them gets to be dominant, and you know, we just kind of, or I just tell James Harden, you're gonna play off ball, like, <laughs> just spot up in the corner and like drive and you'll still get 25. I will say right away, I like how your team's uh, set up from like a, you know, positionless standpoint, I guess, because like you can have LeBron playing point and have Harden and Curry just, you know, draining threes, you know, standing in the corners and LeBron either he's going to drive and people guard him there and he then he dishes it out to Harden or Curry or they don't guard him and he just drives and dunks it every time, so. Yeah, we're going to be getting those buckets. There's yeah. no doubt about that. I mean, that. That's where I need uh, some length. I got KD and Kawhi just playing long on him. So, we'll see. Um, all right, from here, I'm going to go um, – <laughs> you know, I'm going to – and this is going to be prime of this player, and that's Carmelo Anthony. Uh, you know, I'm going to – Wow. I'm going to just have him – and he's going to be – I mean, when he – the biggest knock on him is he can never um, – you know, he was, a, he was a, kind of like Harden, I guess. He was he was a ball hog shooting-wise and always needed to get his own shots up. Um, and his team's number one and a big reason for that. But, I, I don't know, I remember watching him with the Olympic teams, and he was so good there because all he did was just stand behind three-point line and just drain threes when the ball was kicked to him. And – I think it's going to happen with the, you know, with a team like this. Um, but overall, I mean, Carmelo was just one of the best pure offensive scorers of this past decade, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, it even started before that, you know, he's in the draft class with um, the year after LeBron. So, or was it the same year as LeBron? Yeah, it was him, D Wade and yeah, it was him, D Wade and LeBron. So, yeah, I mean, I just do not – I would never want Carmelo <laughs> Anthony on my team. Like, I know. It's probably I, a polarizing pick. I mean – Hey, that's – this is – we live to have some debates. I yeah. mean, you're right. He is an extremely gifted offensive scorer, but, like, not a good passer. I feel like an empty rebounder. Like, 
I, I just don't think – I mean, he, I don't think he could ever be the best player on a title team. I don't think um, that he made the right decision going to, like, the Knicks. I think you kind of saw that he just could not carry. He, he just – who never kind of developed his game with a modern um, like three point shooting. He was just kind of jab, step, jab, step, mid range. Like, but I mean, listen, he made eight all stars this decade, which is crazy, but also kind of goes to show you, I feel like once you're like a certain level of like stardom, like you just make the all star team. Yeah, even popularity. Like not, yeah. It's kind of like how baseball used to be, I think. Baseball yeah, kind of I mean, changed with that, with their, you know, the best players are actually making it and stuff, but. It used to just be like, you know, it was Jeter, Cano, Pujols every year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I do feel like um, the NBA, there's been a lot of new faces these last couple of years, which is good. There's sort of like that kind of transitional period. Um, but yeah, I mean, you look at the body of work, like he definitely deserves to be in the top players of this decade. I just don't, I just don't want him. That's fair. No, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> um, Okay, so, gosh. I, by the way, Rook, while you're thinking, I got – um, so that was my third forward. Um, so I got three forwards, and now I'm down to just one last guard for my starting lineup. I got Chris Paul, Carmelo, Kawhi, and KD. And you have a guard and a forward slash guard left. You have LeBron, Harden, and Curry. For those keeping track. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's one obvious, based on his stats alone, there's one obvious pick for guard for me. I guess, like, if I'm building a team in real life, I'm just not sure I want this guy, but, like... I think I know who you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I mean, it's the eternal debate, but I think for this particular instance, I think he's the next best guard, and he still is a great player. That's Russell Westbrook. Um, he obviously can't shoot, but, like, he really does everything else, like, really well. Like, he's an excellent, like, hustle player, athlete, rebounder, finisher at the rim. I mean, you saw what the Rockets were doing. It was very interesting to sort of unlock him the second half of the year. So, he made eight, he made eight All-Star games, eight All-NBAs, won an MVP. I mean – He's very polarizing, but I, I think he's deserving to be in my <laughs> in my second guard pick right here. Um, I need just a freak athlete to just kind of guard and dish and I don't know. Yeah. He, he's he's an interesting and polarizing guy, but he is extremely talented when given the right opportunity and setting. So. Yeah, I um. I chose to avoid him because I had KD and we all know about the beef between those two <laughs> dudes. <laughs> and also because, uh, you know, him and Chris Paul got traded for him for each other. So I thought that'd be weird bringing them back together. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I got to get, but the there's games. no denying how good he's, how good he is. I mean, uh, just basically a triple double threat every single night, which is crazy to think about. Yeah. I got, um, I got the James Harden Russell Westbrook connection, so they're already going to know how to play with each other. Yeah. Um, the lanes are going to be a little clogged, a little clogged, but <laughs> you know, got to have the talent in there. Yeah, you got the, you definitely got the talent. Um, all right, I'm going to go here. I might move this guy, you know, eventually to come off my bench, but. For now, I'll draft him now, so I lock him down. And that's going to be Kobe Bryant because <laughs> I need him. Kobe. I, yeah, and so he only he was 31 by the time he came into uh, this decade um, and, you know, played, what, uh, seven seasons in this decade. Um, and, you know, he was definitely past his prime, I think, this for this decade overall, but he was still getting his on – um, mostly on Lakers teams that just weren't good. You know, he was it was him just shooting a lot. He averaged uh, 25 points per game four times or three times this decade, um, or four times actually, yeah, and and 27 points per game three other times. So I I like his scoring and like I said off the bench, I think you know you just bring him as as like that sixth man scorer 
Um, and I like that role for him, especially with with what – I mean, if it was earlier Kobe, it would be different. But I think these later career Kobe, I think it would be good for – to be that sixth man. Kind of like um, I'm thinking – right now I'm thinking the Heat did with, like, Ray Allen on that team. You know, they just brought him off the bench just to shoot and be good. <laughs> so – yeah, I mean, listen, it's never the – you can never make a wrong pick by taking Kobe Bryant. Yeah, so. right. He's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, he's, he's one of the goats. So. He's still made four All-NBAs this decade, seven-time All-Star. I mean, again, those last yeah. couple All-Stars, that's like what we were talking about earlier. Like, the last three were just, like, legacy picks. But, um, but yeah, the first four years of the decade, yeah, All-NBA. really all good. Four years, so, you're getting yeah. – it's like, again, the Miguel Cabrera, Troy Tulowitzki. You get, like, half a decade of really good play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you'll get the last two years of him being bad. But the body of work is still there, I think. Yeah. And he's my he's my shooting guard, so there we go. Well, yeah, this is interesting. I think I think if we're matching up straight up, I think my next pick has to be Anthony Davis. Um Yeah, that's I that's uh, the pick I was going back and forth on because there's really, you know, he, he's like a power forward slash center type. Yeah. Yeah. He, I think you're seeing like, listen, he's made um, seven all-star games this decade. So the numbers are there. He's averaged over um, 25 points the last, or over, excuse me, over 24 points since 2015. Um he is a monster, and I think you're seeing how good he – I mean, yeah, this decade he averaged 23.7 points, 10.5 rebounds, two assists. He's going to be my defensive written protector. The paint's going to be tough to, to score on him. I mean, he's the best, like, tall man in the NBA. If we're not – he doesn't like to be called a center, but, like, he is a center. Um, so he's going to round out my, uh, my starting five there. Yeah. And he can uh, shoot too, which is helpful. He can definitely shoot and he's not he's playing with LeBron again there. So I like that. Yeah, I got a lot of synergy. Uh it's <laughs> Russell and James Harden and Anthony Davis and LeBron and Steph is just my free agent. Yeah, but he's you know he'll he'll be good with anybody. So all right. So now I'm into uh we got our last three rounds here. Um my first like I said, Kobe might be coming off the bench sometimes. So I am thinking another guard that I could play uh, it may be in my starters, and I'm going to go that we're out here. I'm going to go Dwayne Wade. Um, he was, I think, one of those other guys that, you know, his prime was definitely when this was – when this decade was starting. Um, you know, it was him on that, on that Miami Heat team with LeBron. Um, it was probably the start of his downturn of his, of his career. You know, once LeBron left Miami, it was basically when – Dwayne Wade's career was, you know, he had a bunch of injuries and kind of why LeBron left anyway, but um, was still, I mean, that team was so good and he was really good on it. And I think before LeBron got there, Dwayne Wade was definitely viewed as one of the best players in the league. So, um, but yeah, in this, he made uh, eight all-star teams in this past decade, um, which a couple of those were popularity based, but I mean, still just one of the, even when he was older, he was just a crafty scorer. So um, I'll probably be starting moving him in my starting rotation, and and Kobe will be my my sixth man scorer. Yeah, I mean, one of the best shooting guards. I think what number two shooting guard of all time, or maybe number one. Like, yeah, can't can't really go wrong with that one. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, right now, I mean, I got three three of the four banana boat guys. I got Car- Carmelo, Chris Paul, and Dwayne Wade. So, and you got LeBron. So. I got I got the uh, the leader of the banana boat though. That's you do, matters. you do. But he'll probably come to my team because I already got three. Of them, so. <laughs> he probably would actually. It might he be would. Easier. <laughs> probably easier for him to go. Um, yeah. Force yeah. his way off my team. He'll take... get dude. You know who gets sick of Russell Westbrook and Harden? So. <laughs> That's right. I mean, hey, we're gonna be like a beautiful phoenix. You know, we're gonna burn so bright for a couple of years. <laughs> all gonna fall apart. What a great comparison. <laughs> Never heard uh, that compared to sports before. This is what I, this is what I bring to the viewers and the <laughs> listeners right here. I've been reading Harry Potter, so Phoenix is. Oh, that's why. Top that of is, mind. That, let's be real. That that is why. <laughs> is that what that that's one of the quarantine activities there? 
yeah, you know, got to keep my mind sharp and <laughs> dive into a, another world other than this one. Oh, man. All right. So you are up. We got you got three bench spots left. Yeah, this one. Um, I'm going to go with um, Paul George on this one. Uh, six Great time all star this decade. Um, really good bench player. I mean, he's perfect coming off the bench. Five all NBAs. He's going to be able to guard any wing, um, really anyone that's out there. Make threes, play good defense. So I think he's a great guy to have come off the bench and has been really, when you think about him on the Pacers, just one of the consistently in the playoffs, consistently on winning teams. So, um, and he's cool being like that second fiddle. So I think he'll actually fit in really well here. Yeah. I like that. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Blake Griffin here. Um, you know, he was, it it was, you know, him and Chris Paul were that lob city combo. Um, and when he was, I mean, he was just one of the most fun players to watch back then when he was just dunking over everyone. Um, and you know, he he was a rookie of the year in 2010, 2011 season, um, ended up with six all-stars, uh, five all NDAs, which actually is surprising to me. Um, during this past decade. Um, and I think before he had, you know, he's a legit all-star before he had all these injuries. So, um, you know, before, and I think now he's on the Pistons and all that, but when he was on the Clippers, he was one of the best players in the league, I think, you know, in his prime. So, um, yeah, Blake uh, to be my kind of energy forward off the bench. Yeah, I mean, he he was the – one of the best power forwards this decade um, yeah. could do it all. I mean, the injuries just really have taken a toll on him. Um, I think people forget because the Pistons aren't good and he's been hurt, but people forget. I mean, Lob City, that team, there's going to be like a documentary about Lob City. There's got to be because like they had so much talent and really that, I mean, except for LeBron, right. And the Warriors and, that was honestly pre-Warriors. I mean, they had a bunch of windows to win that, so. It probably should have won a title at some point. I mean. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the year. Um, they lost, I guess they lost to the Spurs, like, almost every year, right? <laughs> yeah, they lost to the they lost to the Warriors, I think. And the Warriors. Um, the Warriors. The Rockets. I guess the, the Thunder Spurs. when they were still at KD. Yeah, I mean, I think they just, like. I forgot how well loaded the West has been. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the West has been loaded, and I think they've had, like, Chris Paul kept getting hurt in the playoffs, or Blake got – they just had, like, yeah. a bunch of bad injury luck come playoff time. And just, like – yeah, just – you know what? We all have things that we wish we could take back, and I just feel like, you know, that team probably wishes they could have done better in the postseason, but sometimes you don't get your chance. It is what it is. Yeah. They're, you're right, though. 30 for 30 on that would be interesting, especially yeah. because of how Chris Paul got there because there was the whole thing with the La- – he was going to be traded to the Lakers and David Stern, like, vetoed the, the trade and all that. <laughs> and then he ends yeah. up on the I mean, Clippers where that was probably the start of – because before that, I don't know – you can correct me if I'm wrong, but before that, I don't even remember the Clippers being, like, a thing until, like, Chris Paul got there and Blake Griffin was there. And Lob City basically put them on the map. And then ultimately that's what has now led to them being like a destination, you know, Kawhi and Paul George both go in there this past year. So, yeah. Well, it speaks to how bad that franchise was when literally they were in the best city for like celebrities to live in, in in the country. And like, they still couldn't get anyone to go there. No. (laughs) Um, It's a Lakers town, but like, and it's always going to be a Lakers town, but if you're like a professional and just be like, okay, I can't go to the Lakers. Like I live in LA, I'll play for the Clippers, like whatever. <laughs> I yeah. think that's what Kawhi, and Kawhi thought. He's like, I don't really want to play with LeBron. Just play with the Clippers. Who cares? Yeah. Um, okay. Where am I here? So I got two bench spots. Um, you look at some of the guys that are, left here like surprisingly like LaMarcus Aldridge 
seven all-stars and five all nbas but i just like don't feel like he was ever like a transcendent player he was always really good but like i just when you think of the top players of this decade he just does not jump out to me as one of them no um a guy who does jump out to me and i just don't know if the fit is going to be there but like he can come off the bench and just <laughs> have some fun. And that's Giannis. Um, <laughs> I know he really. It's crazy. He lasted this long, by the way. Yeah. I mean, cause you look at like, like Carmelo has more all NBAs and more like the decade stats are a lot better for other people. But even if I'm taking four years of Giannis, it's still going to be four good years off the bench here. Like, yeah. I mean, he is the second or third best player in the world right now. I think when Kevin Durant is healthy again, he will be like the third best player. Um, you know, he's a perfect guy to come off the bench, give energy, wreck the bench defenses. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy with that. I do. I like that pick. It was one of the guys I was looking at for this, uh, for my last pick here. Um, I mean, yeah, if, even if you just, like you said, you take the last couple of years of his career – um, because of he was raw and, and not really at his peak yet. I mean, the last couple of years have been, you know, some of the best. So I mean, he's been playing since 2014. So Yeah, which is – I it's crazy that he's been playing that long, but – and he's finally molded into one of the best players in the world. Yeah. I mean, but he really wasn't – Um, I mean, his rookie year was, you know – his first two years, he was still developing a lot, but like 2015, 2016, I mean, 16.9 um, points, seven rebounds, four assists, over a steal in the block a game. I'll take that. I'll take five five years, to be honest. It's fine. Yeah, for sure. All right. I am, uh, by the way, <laughs> looking at Giannis's age, He's younger than he's younger than both of us, of I course. Know. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It's like I can't even it's like, wild. imagine that. <laughs> yeah, the guy's like a freak athlete, and he's you know twenty five years old. Um, and he's about to get paid like three hundred million dollars. Right? Yeah, he's what a free agent next off season, I think. Yeah, I think he so once this season's over, he'd have one more year and then but you can the Bucks can offer him an extension um this summer. So yeah. I feel like if you're Giannis, it's like you're gonna get the max anywhere, but why not just take the super max and go from there? Yeah. I mean, probably. Um, all right, my last pick here. I could go a number of different ways here. Um I kind of, I kind of just want to get another guard though, because I got a bunch of forwards in my starting lineup. Um, so I'm going to go Kyrie Irving. Um, you know, he came into the league a year into this decade. 2011 is when he got drafted. Um, but I mean, he's been, uh, he gets a lot of, a lot of, um, you know, crap for being like a team ruiner or whatever when he's with Boston. You know, he wanted out of Cleveland and didn't want to play in the shadow of LeBron. Um, but I mean, like he's, the, I think he's the best ball handler of our, the, you know, this maybe ever, but definitely this past decade, you know, I think he's better ball handler than Curry or anybody else, but also just one of the best pure, you know, drivers to the rim, you know, scores, um, was a six, six time all-star this, this decade overall. And, um, I mean, definitely just one of the best pure offensive players, I think, of of our generation. Yeah. I mean, aren't you, you a little worried about the chemistry issue? Um, I mean, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> if he can't this learn to play with all doesn't these – really even matter. Yeah, if he can't learn to play with all these people, then, like, dude, <laughs> he just won't get minutes. We'll be a seven-man rotation. <laughs> Coach Dan doesn't take that shit. <laughs> no, definitely not, dude. <laughs> and he's got he's got uh, KD on his team, who he basically chose to play with this year. So I mean, whatever. Yeah, but until they have one bad year, then they'll turn on each other. I know, right? Or I'm waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, um, Kyrie probably he was like 
two or three years ago, he like was probably my favorite player. Like he was just awesome. Um, but he's just been, I like love guys who are like team first and like are kind of like not unselfish or like, just like sort of like I'm part of a team. I'm just balling out doing my thing. But like Kyrie, yeah. he's like an artist literally playing basketball, but I think it's hard to debate that he's like, he's kind of not a good teammate or his no. team sort of have not been very good when he's sort of taking charge. So as long as he's the bench buried on the bench, he's probably going to be just fine. I know what you mean though. Like, and I, I'm looking at my team now and I see Kawhi Leonard there and I'm like, yeah, those are complete opposites of like, <laughs> you know, wanting credit and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Kawhi has definitely shifted. The reason I, I Kawhi is one of my favorite players. I have a Kawhi though t-shirt from when he was on the Spurs. Yeah. I liked him because he was silent, kind of a weirdo, and just would play good defense. And like, was I love those kinds of players. Um, but obviously, we've seen the last couple of years. He thinks of himself more as a superstar and like wants his own team and stuff. But first, like five years, yeah, that's like he was, yeah, he was quiet. He just player. played on, you know, he took the back seat to Tim Duncan and all that. Yeah. Um, cool. So I have one more bench pick yeah um, and I'm picking a guard and it's my current favorite player sorry Kyrie but it's Damian Lillard um ah. again we're not gonna be playing a lot of D over here but just wanted to have some again some shooting I mean he's the best I think he's probably the second best three-point shooter behind Steph in the NBA right now um you know he shoots it at like 39 percent you know, he's averaged, you know, over 25 plus the last five years, five-time All-Star this decade. I mean, he came in and averaged 19 points as a rookie. Like, yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> um, like, he's been consistently good since he got in here. Um, and obviously the West has been so stacked that he hasn't really been able to, like, do much in the playoffs. And I just – the Blazers will not win with their current team unless, like, they somehow can – Unless Damien goes to like the East, like it's like the only way. Um, yeah. But you know, I love him that he's kind of again a ride or die team guy, good leader. So he's gonna get my last spot. Yeah, I like his story too. Just come from like Weaver State, and you know, just like you don't see that many, you know, the top players in the in the league coming from like small schools like that. And um, he's a four year guy in college too. Yeah, you know? he wasn't just one of these one and done guys. Yeah. So. Yeah, he was a 22-year-old when he started in the yeah. NBA, which is, like, unheard of now. But, I mean, he came in and you saw he averaged, like, 19 points right off the bat. I mean. Yeah, he's good. Whoever was in the scouting department for the Blazers deserves, like, all the credit in the world because that's <laughs> gutsy. Like, to take a guy from Weber State that, like, everyone's going to be like, who is this guy? Um, and they got, uh, you know, they, they took that chance on McCollum and he's paying off from Lehigh. <laughs> Yeah. Which is I mean, crazy. they clearly saw something and they're like, these guys can shoot like they're the best shooters in the country. Like we need them. And yeah, they were right. Yeah. That's crazy. All right. Well, that, so that wraps it up, you know, eight rounds in the book here. Um, Nick, go through your team and how uh, you kind of see the rotation shaking out and all that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think right now, if I actually had to, to really build a team it would be LeBron, Harden, Anthony Davis, Steph Curry. And I think I would start Damian Lillard actually um, just for like maximum like shooting um, on the floor right there. Cause Steph and Dame are just going to be lighting it up and like yeah. Harden and LeBron just dishing it to them. So I think that's probably my starting five. And then I've got um, Russell Westbrook and Paul George you know, coming off the bench. So Giannis and Russell are like my um, energy guys off the bench, just playing D, doing crazy things. Super um, subs. Super subs. So, and I can stagger my shooters. Like, I think you'd have to have Steph on the court or Dame with like Giannis and Russell Westbrook because they can't shoot. So um, when I really needed points, that would be the starting lineup. But then one of my elite shooters would have to, to play like with those guys. Yeah. Yeah, I like I definitely like you moving Westbrook to the bench in favor of Dame because yeah, Westbrook coming off the bench would just be an insane idea. Um Yeah. All right, my team is looking like 
Uh, definitely starting Kevin Durant and Kawhi Leonard and Carmelo Anthony. Those are my – you know, actually, I'm going to make a change here. <laughs> <laughs> Instant change here. I'm going to make – I'm going to start Blake Griffin over Carmelo because Blake Griffin will be like kind of my stretch five, I guess, um, playing that center role for kind of small ball. Um, but I think he'll be able to like defend, you know, you know, bigger fives in in, in general. But um, I also like Carmelo coming off the bench as kind of like a like you said a super sub and um, a three point threat off the bench. But I'm going KD, Kawhi, Blake Griffin, Chris Paul, and I'm moving Dwayne Wade into the starting lineup as my two guard, and then also bringing Kobe Bryant off the bench. Um, as another, you know, shooting, scoring type. Uh, same thing with Kyrie Irving off the bench um, to just kind of solidify that that bench. Um, I think either one of them can kind of come off at any time and just be the, you know, six-man type uh, in the offensive role. So that's what I'm looking like. Um, I don't know. You guys let us know which which team you like. Anybody we left off. I don't know. Any you mentioned Lamarcus Aldridge earlier. I mean, anybody else that you were thinking about drafting? You know, I think like there are guys like Dirk, Lamarcus yeah. Aldridge, Tim Duncan, maybe even been able to crack this. I think. Yeah, another guy um, like Kobe, you know, and Dirk just having their later parts of the career during this past decade. Yeah, so I think those are the kind of the guys that I was thinking of. You could even maybe make a case for like. Draymond Green or Clay Thompson in here as well. Yeah. Um, maybe even Derek Rose, I mean, for like a couple of years there, Jimmy Butler. So there's a couple of guys, but I think for the most part, I think we did pick the best. I mean, yeah, I think maybe Tim Duncan could have been in there, but like, I think we actually picked the best, you know, 16 guys. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, the one guy I was, I mean, definitely Clay and Draymond were, are, in play because they're part of one of the best teams ever. Um, but Dirk for sure was also one I was thinking about, you know, he's got that title against the heat in this past decade. So, um, all right, well then you guys let us know which of these you like better, which, which, uh, how you would construct, you know, a starting lineup and all that with the bench. 